Hello, this is the podcast from Experian with me, Aid O'Connor. The past few weeks have served up a range of unprecedented challenges for businesses in the face of the global pandemic, Corona. At the time of recording this podcast, we had entered something approaching a full lockdown in the UK for the first time. What this means is that for the vast majority of the workforce, they must now log in from home, while many premises, including bars, restaurants, and retailers, have been ordered to close. Manufacturing plants and construction sites are also severely disrupted if they're working at all. This podcast is the first in our series where we will provide clear advice, calling out the help available and the practical steps businesses can take to protect themselves and put their business in a stronger position. First on the agenda is funding. The Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, has launched the Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme, or CBILS, designed to help businesses through this period when income is taking a severe blow. Joining me on the phone today to discuss how and which businesses can access the scheme is Catherine Hurling, CEO and co-founder of Funding Exchange, and also James McGarver, Managing Director of Business Information Services at Experian. James, if I could start James, if I could start with you. I mentioned the government's coronavirus business interruption loan scheme. What can you tell me about the funding that's been made available through it? Hi, Ed. Um, yeah, so the, the government have announced just recently about the CBIL scheme. It's intended to support small businesses. So really recognizing that the small business recognizing that the small business is the beating heartbeat heartbeat of the UK economy and really trying to support them through this crisis and ensure that they can get the funding necessary to survive. Um, and there's a few factors around that scheme that they've set up. Um, so basically, it's a, it's a facility whereby the government will underwrite loans um, up, to, up to a total of up to a, um, value of £5 million. Um, and actually, for those loans, they will put an 80% guarantee on it, and they will cover the interest and fees um, around those loans. However, the really important thing to, to understand is that for small businesses who want to get access to this, they actually go through their, their regular lenders uh, or small businesses to get access to this funding is simply that they would apply to their lenders as they would under normal circumstances. But where those lenders are unable to um, guarantee those loans or struggling to provide that, that facility to them, then actually they can use the CBIL scheme as a as a effectively as a supporting mechanism to provide those as a effectively as a supporting mechanism to provide those guarantees and, and ensure that those businesses that would otherwise have probably not been able to get access to funding can still get that loan, get get that loan and 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 move forwards. Um, it's worth saying though that you know there are 40 lenders who are accredited to provide this. From a small business perspective, it, it can be to understand where they go, which of those they should approach, how they should how they should tackle that. And Catherine, I was just interested to hear from yourself in terms of, you know, what, what's your perspective on this and, and what are you seeing in the marketplace at the minute around how businesses are approaching this? Yeah, James, I think it is a really uncertain time for businesses. I think we're all how this crisis is actually going to unfold. And as a small business owner myself, I think we wake up and we want to protect the people we work with and the businesses we run. Um the government, I think, has recognized this, um, that there is a real need for information and for access to funding and make that funding available very, very. I think there's a really good first response that the Business Bank has put together in, in record time and uh, accredited 40 lenders and in, in that are now trying to make funding available into the market. I think one of the things we need to recognize is that this um, disruption that we are witnessing in our own businesses is equally experienced in our own businesses, is equally experienced by our banks and lenders that are supporting us. And many of the banks and lenders are trying to work through these challenges of having people not available in a call center because of the, the lockdown of the country, um, having call centers that are receiving record volume, having call centers that are receiving record volumes of calls and trying to grapple with how to support the businesses that they want to support. And I think this is what we're seeing is 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 tremendous tremendous efforts to try and get and get the support to the businesses out. We do recognise that it will take a lot of details weren't finalised until actually Sunday night after many many of my colleagues working 24/7 uh, over weekends and um, really trying to get this in place. So. What will happen is, is, is definitely that the government will continue to support the process and will ensure that this process will ensure that this process is as successful as it possibly can be. 
I think we just need to understand that um, the robustness of being able to talk to your bank right now is um, hampered by just all of the challenges that we're all facing. So what we're recommending to businesses that are needing to talk to their lenders is really, talk to their lenders, is really to use digital ways of communicating and self-help in terms of applying for funding where at all possible, because you're there reducing the strain on these call centers and individuals that are already um, experiencing uh, more volume than they can possibly deal with in the very, very, very short term. So where we can help um, as business owners and our funding exchange can also help is, is trying to just direct customers to those lenders who are most likely to be able to help and fund them. And I think you made a really important point there, James, around the eligibility for customers. The eligibility is that one is for those businesses that have been disrupted by this crisis and to support them through the adjustments that they're making now. But the eligibility has been devolved and the credit assessment is still being devolved to the individual lenders. So businesses that are seeking to access finance through the scheme, which, as you said, James, have to access to have to access the scheme through those lenders. And unfortunately, there isn't a single set of criteria that will apply to all of these lenders. They will all continue to operate their own credit models. And so what we think is needed to create more certainty around where to get the best support is actually to have is actually to have a single interface that allows businesses to understand which lender is offering them support and where they should be going to get the support that they need now. And I think we're, we're working with a number of the lenders who are part of the scheme to start and provide that single interface into the scheme. Catherine, if I'm a business listening that is best to approach, is it my usual bank or another source? The reality is that the big members of the scheme who will be delivering um, a large share of the support that the businesses are looking for are the big banks. They are still serving a large proportion of the business community, particularly the major businesses. We know that these banks are intensely focused on supporting their existing customers. So if you are banking with one of the big banks, being able to help to reach out to these banks and ask for the help that you need right now is really important. We do know about the challenges of getting in touch. So using, again, digital, again, digital means of connecting to them or applying for credit um, is, is the, the best route in. We know many businesses today are no longer working or, or holding current accounts with the large banks. If your business um, does not bank with one of the large banks or the large bank is unable to help you, to help you, there are these other lenders that are part of the scheme. Um, again, to get access to those, I think it's going through a platform like Funding Exchange that will give you quickly visibility on where you can get funding and which of these lenders are likely to provide you a, um, the solution that you're looking for. But I would also encourage businesses that need access to funding now to consider non-civil schemes members. There are a number of very well-positioned lenders, Funding Circle, iWalker, and others, who will continue to provide funding to businesses. They're not yet part of the civil scheme. They are looking to join this, but they are ready to lend. In many cases, because of the digital processes that they have, they're able to help much more fast, much more quickly if a business is needing finance now. So don't ignore the non civil lenders. They are there. They are helping businesses. But equally, exploring the civil lenders is, is something encouraged by us. There's a, there's a key point there, isn't there? That, um, um, you know, funding is available right now. Um, there are a number of lenders out there who are, who are looking to help small businesses. The purpose of the civil scheme is really to help those lenders make more funding available to small business. And so don't get diverted by who's on civils and who isn't on civils. The, there's still funding opportunities out there across a wide range of lenders. Um, and the civil scheme is there to support those lenders and ensure that they can, they can offer, offer funding in cases where otherwise they may struggle. I think that's a really good message, Catherine, around you know, explore those alternate lenders, explore those, those smaller organisations that, um, that you, you'll be able to find if you go to sites like Funding Exchange. Um, and better understand who else is out there in the marketplace and offering funding to help you through this this critical time. L looking at the process here, um, James, can I ask you what businesses can do to ensure they're in the best possible position to apply for or be accepted to finance at a time like this? 
Yeah, so, I mean, firstly, let's, let's be realistic. It's you know, These are the same steps that businesses need to take on an ongoing basis, and all good businesses will be thinking about their finances in this way. Um, I guess in this time of um, change, um, change and uncertainty, then that's not, that's not really any difference. You know, there's, there's some basics that, that we've got to make sure that we're still we're still tracking against. And those basics are, you know, at the simplest level, think about your outgoings, um, look at if there's ways where you can create more flexibility around that. Um, you know, how do you preserve your working capital right now, working capital right now, um, and ensure you've, you've got um, provisions there to fall back upon. Um, but really think about the, the cash flow of the business and, and you know, how, how you're, um, how you're maximising that right now. Um, I think the other really important point here is that the civil scheme isn't the only thing that the government have announced clearly over the last few clearly over the last few days to support small businesses. There's been a wide range of, of things that have been published just recently, and you know the job retention scheme that we've seen around the government funding up to 80% of, of staff costs where businesses can't afford to uh, maintain their employee base um, and actually put those employees onto further closely out to see if there's, there's opportunity to leverage that. Um, additional schemes around deferring back payments, uh, the statutory sick pay um, package that was announced, and in fact, various small business grants as well that are, are being made available now. So there's a range of government initiatives that are being um, published and pushed and, and being um, published and pushed and, and great opportunities there for, for businesses to really take stock of those and see how can they help. Um, and then probably thirdly, you know, and again, this is a, a kind of basic tenant that all businesses should be looking at, but you know, ensure you're getting paid. Um, many businesses are under stress, but at the same time, then you've got to protect the revenue that you're expecting to see coming in through the door. So call your customers, um, call your um, suppliers and just and, and explain why you need their support, um, why you need those invoices paid um, in a timely way. Yes, you might be, be pushed to extend your payment terms around that, but, but ensure that you've got with those customers in, in order to ensure those invoices are paid. Um, and you know, check on the payment performance of those customers and suppliers. Um, you know, Experian has a, has a range of data, as, as do other providers in the marketplace, but that can help you better understand the financial strength and the position that those businesses are in. Um, and you know, you're maximizing um, your chances of getting paid on those invoices on time. Um, and then I guess the last point is, is when you're then at that point around external funding um, and looking to go through the application process, then there's a whole load of, of things you'll need to prepare for, for that. You know, look at your bank statements, pull down your management accounts data, uh, accounts data, um, and really make sure you've got all of the right information at hand there to support the loan application journey. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a few things there that hopefully businesses can, can think about. That's great, James. So, Catherine, did you did you have anything to add to that in um, in what you would um, <laughs> best hope to see from the businesses that put them into the strongest position to access finance? No, I think actually James covered this really well. I think when we are okay. looking at the profi profile of needs, though, it's, it is a very small amount of finance, and I think um, it is worth considering if you're needing fifteen thousand pounds to help you over the next couple of weeks. There's probably looking at the commercial options that are out there in the market that help you in the very short term, um, that give you the certainty that you have the funding available and you're not um, held up in a process that may take longer for you to receive the funding. Okay, that's great. Um, th thinking about civils, um, about civils, um, how does the relationship work between the borrower and the lender who comes through this process? I think as we as we on bits, um, that really doesn't change in terms of a, a regular business loan. Um, it's you know the the borrower will still be working with that finance provider, that finance provider um, going through the st standard loan application journey. Um, it's really that the civil scheme is there to support those lenders in in extending funding where they probably would otherwise you know struggle to do so under the current under the current climate. So it really doesn't change things from a from a SME's perspective in terms perspective in terms of how they're applying for the loan or the going through or the really necessarily the lender they're working with. Um, but you know the scheme is there to to give the support to those lenders to make sure they're in a stronger position to offer more loans. Um, that would be my view on that. 
Yeah, I think I, I absolutely agree that the relationship continues to be between the business and the lender. I think that the scheme does put in place some benefits for businesses that are really important to understand. And the first one is it, the scheme is designed to give businesses a bit more breathing space. People understand that cash flow is a key issue and a key challenge for businesses right now. If you are part of the scheme, you are actually getting an interest-free holiday for 12 months. Um, the cost of the interest payments is really being covered by the government for that period. Now, even though you're getting an interest holiday, though, it doesn't mean that you're not repaying, repaying the loan. You are still liable for, for the full loan repayments, and those repayments are starting from the time that you're taking out the loan. But nonetheless, by um, benefiting from the interest payments holiday, you are creating a little bit more breathing space. And equally, there are some interest caps applied uh, to the scheme, so you are finance um, for your business. In terms of the term length, again, there's a there's a, a desire to extend the term length um, to make those loan repayments more affordable, and therefore the financing terms uh, can be up to six years for term loans, and they can actually be uh, up to three years for all an invoice financing facilities. So it is it is designed to help the business in those challenges that they're facing today. Excellent. Um, is there anything else from a funding perspective that you think that the business that's really struggling to get to grips with the situation should be considering as first steps? Yes. Yeah. So I think James gave us a really good overview of all of the things that businesses can do now uh, to put themselves into a stronger position. And I think as a business owner myself, I want to feel that I'm in, in control of some of the things that I can actually do to create a better position for my business and my employees and my employees. And so I would focus very clearly on creating a list of things that I can do right now that are giving me more runway in terms of being able to pay my employees and being able to stay in business that are things that I can control. I can't control necessarily whether I'm go whether I'm going to be approved for a loan or not. I can, yes, I can prepare that loan application, but I can certainly look at my cash flow and make choices around what I will be paying for in the future in terms of what are services that I really require and where do I have the opportunity actually to create more flexibility for myself and my business. And I think it's that sense of control that often is, is something that gives business owners a little bit more comfort that they're facing into a future that's becoming just a tiny bit less uncertain. And I think from an emotional perspective, I feel having a list and knowing exactly what I can do today and how I'm going to help the business um, is really important. One of the things we've done at Funding Exchange is that actually we have thought about what we want the company to look like after the crisis. And that has helped us as a team actually come together um, with a really clear vision as to what we want to do through the crisis to help other businesses, but also to build a business that, but also to build a business that we're really proud of. And having that positive vision, I mean, that is what's inspiring our team and us on a daily basis to work really, really hard. And I'm hoping that some of the businesses that um, are facing into this crisis can also look beyond the next few months and actually start communicating that vision to employees and other stakeholders. Yeah, I was just going to, I mean, back up what Catherine just said there. I think, it's, yeah, these are really uncertain times for all of us, both in our in our home lives, in our work lives, you know, in, in business more generally. Um, and I think there's a key message there around controlling the controllables. You know, we, we're not in control of our things that you know, we have in our control completely and we need to stay on top of those. And, and there will be tough decisions that the business owners have to make, um, but look to the future and, and, you know, make those informed with the right information. You know, stay abreast of the changing landscape. There are, you know, there's new schemes coming out left, right and centre. The, the centre, the, the um, things are changing by the day at the minute. Um, but make sure you're in control of, the, of your own destiny to a degree by by staying abreast of that and, and you know, as I say, keep control of the controllables. Um, really, really good advice there, I think, Catherine. That's all we've got time for on this podcast. If you've listened and found it useful, please do share it with the companies in your networks who may be helped by it. Thanks to our guests, Catherine Hurling, CEO and founder of Funding Exchange, and James McGarver, Managing Director of Business Information Services at Experience. Take care and goodbye for now.